I'm here in the office of a US Senator trying to figure out what the hell is going on in Washington, DC. Today, folks, I'm going boots on the ground and we're exploring the underground dark money that flows its way through our politicians. So join us on this episode as we ask the questions that the politicians are scared of. Nancy Pelosi. Tell me about dark money and politics. Do you think Jeffrey Epstein killed himself? Do you think JFK was taken out by our own government? What the hell is going on in this place? Because after all, folks, guess who pays their salaries? We do. We are the taxpayers. They are supposed to answer to us. And I'm not here to say one side or the other. I think it's both Democrats and Republicans that are doing a fantastic job of f***ing this country up. So buckle up, Buster. It's going to be a wild ride today. I love America. I really do. And I'm grateful that I was just lucky enough to be born as a citizen of this country. And I'm well aware that the U.S is a worldwide destination for immigrants looking to come here, launch their businesses, raise their families, and enjoy this land of opportunity. But that's not to say that America doesn't have real issues facing this country. We do, big time. We are living in an era where we have no idea what the truth is anymore, and we have public servants that have somehow become worth tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. We also have massive news stories that are being swept under the rug. And the truth is people just don't trust our government anymore. For the record, I've never voted Republican or Democrat in my life. I think they both suck. I'm just here on a quest for the truth. So I traveled to Washington, D.C. to look for corruption and call it out. I interviewed everyday Americans and I also scheduled meetings with political insiders, including people ranked on Washington, D.C.'s top 500 most influential. And we even spoke with a U.S. Senator. Buckle up, folks. Let's get into it. On the road again, baby. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be an American. But I'm not proud of our government. I'm asking the questions that they're scared of. Let's go to Washington, D.C., baby. Before we hit Washington, D.C., I wanted to get the pulse of the nation. So I asked everyday Americans if they trusted their government. Here's what they said. Do you trust our government? Absolutely not. I don't know. Not a bit. Let's just say that history tells us that governments tell only what they want you to know. Of course not. Do you think most of our politicians lie to us? Yeah, no, nine out of ten. Ten out of ten, actually. Do you think they're corrupt? It was midnight in Baltimore and tragedy had struck. Because when we were in Detroit, you didn't have it in your hand, right? So uh -huh. it's going to be in Detroit. Go to delta.com slash lost items and fill out a report. As of one month later, this suit is still missing. Thank you, Delta. Oh, I'm sorry, that sucks. Thanks. We have to go to TJ Maxx. I left my suit on the plane like a total amateur. Nancy Pelosi, I dedicate this to you. We don't make it to their White House because we just get to charge her with indecent exposure. I'm a gorilla in this bitch. They should put me in the zoo. Pandemic flow, you would think I got the flu. I gamble on myself. You can bet I do a milli. From the mill, killing shit like Buffalo Billy. First up, Agent G had a mission to infiltrate the office of Nancy Pelosi. You see, Americans have long been suspicious of people like Pelosi that have managed to turn a $230,000 salary of a public servant into a $100 million fortune. Right now, members of Congress can own and trade individual stock. But the problem is if you're in Congress, you have access to information the rest of us don't have, and you have power that the rest of us don't have. I think that might be called insider trading. Shockingly, Pelosi's stock trading success has outperformed the top top hedge funds on the planet. Her trades make Warren Buffett look like a buffoon. Critics argue that her impeccable timing of the market is the result of privileged information. The founder of Wall Street Bets even made a bot to track her trades called Insider Portfolio. It's doing quite well. This was her response to the allegations. We are a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. Hmm. Interesting answer, Nancy. So now I go on a mission to infiltrate her office and confront her on her trading. That is something they're doing that we don't know about. I'm going to go knock on her office door and see if she wants to chat. See you soon, Nancy. <laughs> we're in, baby. We're in. Even though this place is completely public and funded by taxpayer dollars, it feels like a place you're not supposed to be. There's too much shenanigans going on. I want to express a deep congratulations to Nancy Pelosi, the best stock trader being hedge funds in America the last three years. We're going to see if we can congratulate her in person. I feel like I'm about to be taken out by the Secret Service or some shit. Hello. Hi. How you guys doing? Hello. 
Is there any chance she might be available, or Nancy might be available for a five minute interview? Unfortunately, no. We are looking to see advice. I mean, she's the best performing stock trader of the America the last three years. We're kind of looking for financial advice. Or, I mean, she is doing a tremendous job. It's almost like impeccable timing she has. Like, there is no recording in this office. Oh, sorry about that. You know what's disrespectful is trading on the American inside information, which she's doing all the time. Yeah, I mean, allegedly, allegedly. Uh -huh. They say that's disrespectful for filming. She's the one that she's well, I think it's disrespectful is people that are using inside information to enrich themselves when they call themselves a public servant. I have a feeling that uh, we have to get out of here quickly. S&P 500 to 2% this year, the last 12 months. She's on 20%. Of course, we're not gonna get an interview with you. We're always just gonna get a bureaucrat telling us another email to send that you're never gonna return anyway. Hey guys, we're giving out uh, Nancy Pelosi's latest stock trades just dropped. You should probably do them too. They're gonna give you big, big gains, big gains. I mean, she's not the only offender. There's people on both sides of the aisle. We'll give a little slideshow, a little presentation of who they are. But congratulations is in order to Representative Pat Fallon from Texas, who is late to report his 122 stock trades worth up to $21 million. But it's okay, folks. It got balanced out when he got a fine of $600 to correct the issue. Another congratulations to Marjorie Taylor Greene, who bought Chevron and Lockheed Martin conveniently right before the invasion of the Ukraine war was announced to the public. To give you an idea of how pervasive this behavior is in Congress, in a 2022 report, 131 members of Congress were responsible for 788 million in trades and more than 12,700 transactions, which begs the question, how are full-time public servants able to dedicate so much of their time to stock trade? These people are all funded, all these beautiful buildings, their salaries, all their little excursions and write-offs and I'll scratch your back, you'll scratch my back, funded by the goddamn taxpayer. What do average Americans think about this? What do you think when you see politicians worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It seems a little outrageous. It's still For people who are supposed to be serving our best values, it's definitely wrong. It's something they're doing that we don't know about. It just smells fishy to me. It smells awful. In the month leading up to the D.C. trip, Keegan and I spent hours calling and emailing many members of Congress, including contacting all 100 senators multiple times. The only senator brave enough to be interviewed by a YouTuber was Mr. Ron Johnson. I got to ask him questions like, do you think JFK was taken out by our own government? Do you believe that there's anything fishy about the death of Jeffrey Epstein? Let's talk to the man. All right, folks, we're here outside the Senate building meeting with Senator Johnson. A lot of my career is going into places that I really don't belong. This is one of them. I got some spicy questions for this man. I got a lot of cash in this thing. I'm going to try to influence some senators. You guys think I'm going to be successful? Good luck. Thank you. One of the brains behind the operation here while we're even here today hey, man. is Jonathan Wickman. We're with people right now that love America and want the best for America. Absolutely. I feel like we're missing that attitude a little bit. People like you, Tommy, making documentaries like this to show the people the real truth about what's going on in our government. Do you feel like there's a lot of dirty business in this building? Of course. You have lobbyists that walk in and out of these offices all day long. And we're here with Senator Ron Johnson. Lower Senator Johnson. Welcome to DC. Good to see you. Let's see, my first question, Senator Johnson, is we're on a quest for truth right now. A lot of the American people are scared of the future and can't trust our government. What do you think about that? Well, unfortunately, they're justified in their lack of trust of the federal government. The good news is that we're a great country because we have good people. Mm -hmm. And if the good people can rise up and demand the truth, maybe they'll start getting it. We what? emailed all 100 senators, and he's the only guy that had the cojones to meet. I did put one amendment stenciled on our walls, the 10th Amendment. The power really resides with the people. Are you optimistic about the future of America? Uh, that's a tough one. With our current state, I'd say right now I'm, I'm pretty pessimistic. And right now government's growing, it's completely out of control. It's literally immoral what we're doing to our younger generations right now. What do you say to people that think most politicians are corrupt? I think there's some, but I don't think. I don't think that's true. You know, the people I serve with, I think they come here because they, they love this country. Regardless of party, the real problem is the capture of the agency. Take a look at all the generals that work right now for the military industrial complex, for Lockheed Martins and stuff. You don't think they didn't know that when they were recommending weapons programs? That, that seems that, dirty to, to me. To me, that is the corruption. Mm. It literally is the revolving door of people that work in the executive branch, jumping from Serbian government into the big corporations, the big unions. I was working for the Agriculture Committee in 
I work for Monsanto, that kind of... Yeah, so if you're doing that, are you gonna write a piece of legislation that's gonna really provide oversight over Ma Monsanto? No, you're gonna treat them with kid gloves. They got a big fat old job offer. You know, say, hey, well, can you get, before you come and work for us, can you get us this in here? Gets quietly inserted into 1,500 pages and nobody even sees it. Senator Johnson, I brought a considerable sum into this office. What can I get with that crisp 50 around here? A cup of coffee. Can I get any influence in the market or anything like that? There's some pretty good popcorn down the ground floor here too. I was hoping for a bit more than that. Do you believe that there's anything fishy about the death of Jeffrey Epstein? Well, certainly it's fishy. The cover-up of the list of individuals that visited Epstein Island Doesn't that is, seem crazy? Is, pretty, is pretty fishy. I will say, I think this is true, is, is mainly people of the left that uh, Jeffrey Epstein was courting and that took advantage of his island pleasures. Don't you feel like anyone that's on that list should be looked into? Well, I think we should have a full investigation of Jeffrey Epstein and his activities. Does it feel like it's been kind of brushed under the rug? Yes, line? because it has been. Let's see what everyday Americans and Washington, D.C. political insiders have to say about this. Do you think Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> I do not. Who the hell is Jeffrey Epstein? No. No. Hell no. They killed him. Uh, he had too much dirt and too many pile ups. <laughs> I would say I have not done enough research to be able to answer that question. Do you find his death suspicious? Yeah, I definitely think there is suspicion there. It's tough to say, it's pretty suspicious. Do you think Jeffrey Epstein killed himself? Oh, wow. What's. I, that was, let's go, let's, yeah, yeah. let's go to the on the <laughs> Especially Clinton, 23 times visiting the island, it's like. I'm gonna go back to the on the brain okay. question now. <laughs> this will be the last question. Do you think Jeffrey Epstein killed <laughs> himself? That's not really an issue we focus on, you know. There's no like official crew position on anything like that, so. Okay. We're not gonna comment. <laughs> no one in crew was ever going to file a complaint without a lawyer being like having like at least five different lawyers looking at it. I did find it very strange that the left-leaning groups I talked to wouldn't comment on Jeffrey Epstein. But anyways, back to Senator Johnson. What to you is your biggest accomplishment or something that you're most proud of or your time in office? Without me, 95% of American businesses would not have got a tax cut. They would have been put at a huge disadvantage to the big C corps. So you're probably a pass-through business, right? And I'm an S corp now. Is that yeah. a pass-through? Yeah, so you got a- I got a tax break? Yep. My nigga, my nigga, my nigga. I think our response to COVID was a miserable failure. And I don't see how anybody can take a look at the human toll, the economic devastation from the shutdowns that didn't work. Why have we not been allowed to even talk about it? Like for instance, saying the lab leak theory, we've got you censored and now it's kind of been established to be the most likely theory on what happened. The mainstream media, for whatever re reason, just wasn't an honest report. What do you think Trump getting in trouble for not stating his pronouns? What do you think about that? No, don't know anything about it. Do you think he should have said his pronouns? <laughs> no, I mean, it's all ridiculous. If you want to live your life one way, fine. I mean, that's, that's what America represents, freedom. But don't impose your beliefs or the way you want to behave on somebody else. So I agree with a lot of your call out to the left. What do you think the right should be called out for? Because I feel like both parties are kind of not so good. So I'm not a fan of the Uniparty, so I'm critical of my colleagues that join in massive death suspending. I'm not a fan of this place. There's all kinds of things I've been critical of. What's the biggest threat to America right now? I think divisiveness. Those individuals that are just fomenting hate, that are that are exacerbating the divide rather than trying to heal this nation. Again, you said you walk around here, you don't see people hating each other. So why is that the lead news item? There's a bunch of people trying to run now for our 2024, and it seems like a very pivotal election. Who do you think is a remarkable character in this story? One interesting candidacy is Bobby Kennedy. I've gotten to know Bobby. We certainly share a lot of views in terms of what we did during the pandemic. Do you think JFK was taken out by our own government? I just recommend people read the JFK and the unspeakable. There's just so many unanswered questions, so many witnesses that just died, so many leads that weren't followed up on, so much evidence that obviously should have been collected that people were prevented from collecting. So is it so, possible so, that so, our own intelligence agencies had a hand in his death? I think it's certainly possible, yeah. The American public deserve the truth and we haven't gotten it. Okay, so if our own intelligence agencies are having a hand in taking out our presidents, should we trust our intelligence agencies? Do they I have don't. our best interests at heart? I don't trust them. I've seen our own federal law enforcement act corruptly. They knew that Hunter Biden's laptop was genuine. And I've seen it being covered up by a complicit and corrupt media. A lot of people commented that it would be dangerous to do this video. But the mission of the channel is to be on a quest for truth. And I'm gonna give the people what they deserve. Have you ever thought people are tailing you or tapping into your computer or phone or I just kind of assume they are that's crazy do you think I have a file in the FBI or the CIA office like no offense
that's probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My plea to young people is jealously guard your freedom. Folks, we only get one America. You gotta be a patriot, you gotta stand up to bureaucrats, tyrants, and bastards in the government. Anything to add to that? I endorse that message. There's some people that are under the impression that the Illuminati control the country. Is that nonsense or what's going on there? So in 1910, six individuals representing a quarter of the wealth of the world boarded a train to go down to Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia to set up a cartel they called the Central Bank, the mm. Federal Reserve. But I, I, I do believe there is a small group of individuals that exert a great deal of influence on global politics. I think that's just true. Next, let's cover the topic of dark money. In 2010, the Supreme Court ruled against End Citizens United, which basically means that the ultra wealthy can use their money to control this country like a puppet. Do you think there's a lot of dark money in politics? The deep state is alive and well. Of course. You have an inside look into Washington, D.C. What is something that is just critical for the people that know right now? A lot of the corruption comes in through dark money. Corporations, super PACs, they can remain anonymous. So if you care about corruption, you should demand transparency. Really important not to just feel like it's hopeless, because that's exactly what they want. Most people have heard of a case called Citizens United, yeah. uh, which is a Supreme Court case that basically made it okay to spend unlimited amounts. We head to the offices of N Citizen United and meet Tiffany Mueller. She's leading the charge to eliminate dark money from politics, and she's ranked as Washington top 500 most influential people. Let's meet her. How do we take power away from just an elite few? And how do we give it back to the people? In 2020 alone, there was over a billion dollars of dark money spent in our election. But prior to Citizens United, there had never been a billion dollars spent cumulatively on our election. This is like an arms race. And the people being hurt the most are just everyday Americans who want government to work and to do shit. Dark money literally just means undisclosed money. So you can't tell exactly who's trying to influence our elections or our policy decisions. Doesn't that seem fishy? Oh, it's so fishy. <laughs> it is Next, we stop in the office of Crew, a group against government corruption, and we cover the recent story of a Supreme Court justice doing sketchy things. You just had a piece that I thought was fantastic. You were highlighting Clarence Thomas, a Supreme Court justice right. who arguably should be one of the most ethical people in our country. Right. What was he found to be doing? He had been accepting private jet transportation, yacht trips, real estate deals, and including private tuition for a grandnephew who he treats as his son without disclosing them. Sounds like he had a kind of a billionaire was more or less his sugar daddy. Exactly. I, I, I feel totally like that should be not allowed. Absolutely. To end the episode, guys, we go back to Milwaukee to look at Senator Johnson's work in the Joseph Project. Enjoy this little journey. Hey. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Wow. Senator Johnson is a big fan of the Joseph Project, a Milwaukee nonprofit that helps connect people with employment. Folks, we're Americans. We fight tooth and nail for freedom. The fight doesn't end here. Here's what we can do to change some of the things in our country. What keeps you optimistic about the future? Mm. I've seen real change in this country. There have been a lot of huge changes in the past. But it takes all of us using our voice, not giving up, continuing to fight for what we see as a better future. We can do things to fight the influence of money in politics. That's why we've supported legislation that would bar trading. Individual stocks. Individual stocks. Representative AOC and Matt Gates are bringing a bill that prohibits individual stock trading for senators. I applaud you, I'm a big fan of that. Representatives AOC and Matt Gates are coming together to make a bill that will ban Congress people and their family members, <clears throat> Paul Pelosi, from trading individual stock. And folks, that is how it's done. Forget left and right, Democrat and Republican, we have to come together. The mainstream media wants us stuck in two separate teams that never agree. But no, the new era is coming together to get things done for the people, by the people. I love you guys. See you next week. Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You wanna watch another? Here. You wanna subscribe? Over here. See you next week.